Hello and welcome to the second part of my uh, unlimited deck introduction explanation uh, series. So the first video was about a lock deck and this time it's about a donk deck. If you mention unlimited most people will probably think about this kind of deck instead uh, of the one I showed last week because this one is actually able to win going first in your first turn. Um, yeah. Which is what most people uh, think about when they hear Unlimited. The reason for this is probably because um, this deck exists since 2011. Um, and during that time you were actually able to attack turn 1. So the old version of this deck used uh, Driftblim from Undaunted, which could attack in the first turn. Um, so during that time this was actually the strongest deck. But ever since you couldn't attack anymore, now I would say it's the second strongest unlimited deck. Yeah, so I will now explain how the strategy works. What you see here is Polygon 2 from Great Encounters, a really cool card. Um, the Poker Power download allows you to play the second supporter during your turn. But the way it's worded, um, you can use one supporter for each Polygon 2 in play. Um, during the time, most supporters only search their deck for Pokemon or draw cards. Um, and that kind of stuff, so it was kind of fair, but uh, since, ever since Hot Gold or Silver, the supporters were doing a lot of different things, and then especially during um, X and Y, we had supporters doing a lot of different things, except drawing cards. And this is why you can pair this card with Lysander's Trump card. Um, Lysander's Trump card allows you to shuffle your discard pile into the deck. And you can see that this is very strong just to use a second trump card. Um, so if you have one Polygon 2 in play, you can discard the trump card and use the effect. However, there is a way to play more than one trump card in your first turn. So the first question you might ask is how do I get Polygon 2 in my first turn? There is no Forest of Giant Plant, that doesn't work, it's not a grass Pokemon. Um, yeah, there is a card called Broken Time Space which says that you can evolve every Pokemon in the turn you played it or during the first turn of the game. So with Broken Time Space, um, yeah, you can just evolve the Polygon immediately. Um, this would only allow you to play one trump card, um, but the Evolution Spray allows you to put the Polygon 2 back into your hand and this resets everything. So once you evolve it, it's a new Pokemon and you can use the ability again. So with this combination of cards, you can use as many trump cards as you want. Um, with Verse Seeker, you can take the trump card back and use it again after... Yeah, the trump card itself doesn't get shuffled back, but as long as you have one Verse Seeker, you can play as many trump cards as you want. So with this, you can just cycle through your whole deck as often as you like. And now the next thing you actually, yeah, you might be thinking about is, yeah, but how do I win? Um, yeah, and there is one card which just wins you the game if you can play it an infinite amount of times. And this card is Pokeblower Plus. Um, it's like, yeah, black like Poke Draw Plus, one of the cards if you play it twice from your hand, it gets a different effect. But with Pokeblower, you only want the bad, uh, in quotes, quotation marks, bad effect. Um, you can flip a coin, if heads, you can put one damage count on one of your opponent's Pokemon. And if you play like 100 of these in your first turn, or 2000 in theory, and like I said, you can play as many of them as you want. You will always win at some point. There are some cards which you can't knock out with this. Um, there is an Ancient Trait, I don't have a scan right here, um, which prevents this effect. And against this deck, of course, there is nothing you can do. But this deck isn't really good because it loses against all the other decks. And this is why you can the deck list you see here has some counters, which I will explain later. Um, but it doesn't have counters against cards that aren't played. Of course, you could. There are a lot of cards which you can't win against with this deck, which you could counter as well. But. They are so irrelevant that it doesn't really matter. 
All right, so now you know how in theory you can win. Now let's exp I will explain a few more technical stuff. So if you watched the last video, you might remember Sableye. Yeah, he's really, um, it's a really important Pokemon because if you start with it, you go first. On the decklist, there are only five basic Pokemon. You have four Sableye and then one Porygon. Of course, you need a Porygon to set up Porygon 2. Um, this is quite unfortunate because this means you can start with something different than Sableye. And if you don't start with Sableye, then your opponent will probably start with their Sableye, go first, and then you can't do anything. With the, um, if you watched the last video, uh, then you will definitely notice that there is nothing your opponent can do. So you have to win the coin flip and you have to start with Sableye. If you start Porygon, you will almost never win. Um, you can only win if you start Porygon if your opponent's starting hand is really bad. The Porygon here is from um, Team Rocket, Rocket Expansion. And I only play because it has no retreat cost. So there are a lot of Porygons, but this Porygon has no retreat cost, so it's the best. It doesn't have a lot of HP, and during the old Unlimited, if you ever played that, um, having higher HP was actually more important for basic Pokémon. But why the free retreat is important, I will also explain later. Yeah, but this is the reason why we play this one. There is no other reason. There is one Pokemon which completely blocks your whole strategy, which is Spiritomb. Um, of course, you cannot play Pokedora Plus while Spiritomb is your opponent's active Pokemon. And there is also Trevenant, which does pretty much the same thing. So against Spiritomb, it's a Pokebody on a basic Pokemon. The other deck played Space Center. But Space Center is a stadium card, and you need Broken Time Space in play. If you don't have Broken Time Space in play, then you can't use the strategy. So you have to go kind of a long way to actually get rid of the Spiritual. This Aerodactyl from Skyridge, I think, um, has a Poke Power which ignores all Poke Bodies for one turn. And yeah, like we all know, one turn, and if you get one turn, you win. Aerodactyl is not a basic Pokemon, which is amazing, and it's a cool coincidence that this even exists. Um, yeah, but the fossils are items, so you can't play them against Spiritomb. However, there is uh, one pretty cool card called Strange Cape, which bypasses that. And I will do a video about that as well, but decks that use Spiritomb also use Strange Capes themselves. Because if they play a different basic Pokemon, of course, they will start with that. Um, yeah, but Strange Case allows you, allows you to use um, Fossil Pokemon. And it also allows you to play Aerodactyl. So if you have a Strange Cave, you can put Aerodactyl directly onto your bench. There is no... Of course, you need to have Aerodactyl and Strange Cave in your hand at the same time, which is really unlikely to have on your starting hand. Um, that's why we play Scott. Scott allows you to search your deck for three supporter cards, or like three cards in any combination of supporter and stadium. So you can search your deck for Strange Cave and then two other supporter cards. Um, and these two other supporter cards, uh, one of them is Corinna. It allows you to search your deck for fighting and an item card. Uh, fighting Pokemon and an item card, which is also really cool because you can just search your deck for an Aerodactyl. But if you only have the Corinna on your starting hand, you can search your deck for Professor Oak, for example. Um, which is really cool. That's why Corinna's in this deck. You could also play um, Trevor, which search the deck for just a Pokemon. But you never want to play that. Um, it's all, always useless. Because getting a Pokemon doesn't draw your card, so it's not an extra out against a dead hand, which Corinna is. Um, but if you have an auto-draw card anyways, you would rather discard the Trevor because um, your supporter for the turn is often like the best supporter for a turn you can actually use is Trump card itself. So there's that. The other supporter card you have to search is Mr. Briny. Um, it says you can take any Pokemon back to your hand. You can also play AZ in this deck. It's 100% the same card because there are no energies here. 
So with Mr. Brian, you can take your active save lie into your hand and then put Aerodactyl active. Then use the ability, uh, the Poker Power, and then you play your item cards and then you win. So that's the goal how this deck works, uh, how, how it works against Spiritual. This also works against other Poker Buddies which block items, like Viper for example. It doesn't work against Dark Viplume, but Dark Viplume is not viable in this format, so no one plays it. Yeah, against Trevenin, there is a one of X Maniac. It's the same deal. Um, you can use Scott and search your deck for Hex Maniac, and then use Hex Maniac, and that's it. Yeah, the rest of this deck is basically just consistency. Um, ever since Sun and Moon, you can play a lot more consistency in this deck because they released Rotom decks. Um, because you can shuffle your back, uh, your whole deck back as much as you want, you can play as many Rotom decks as you want as well. Which is really nice because um, before Rotom decks you had to play two Versus Seeker, two Devolution Spray, two Poker Blower. But now you can only play one of each and then your Rotom decks. So you have a bit more space for consistency. Um, to use Rotom Decks more than once in your first turn, there is one Junk Arm and four Item Finder, which can get the Rotom Decks back and reuse it. There is a similar problem, like in the Shovel Lock deck, um, that you can't really search your deck. Um, that's the only reason I play Luxury Ball. It's, it doesn't really add a lot for the consistency. Um, Luxury Ball is just the best card that just it allows you to check your prize cards, and it also gets you basic Pokemon, or just any Pokemon. You can play a level ball too, it doesn't matter which one you use, but Luxury Ball looks a lot cooler, I think. Yeah, that's why I play Luxury Ball. And then you play Computer Search for the same reason, you can search your deck with Computer Search. Dowsing Machine can't do that. And in this deck, you wouldn't really want to play Dowsing Machine anyways, um, because you aren't even maxed out on Junk Arms. So, computer search is just better. Yeah, the other cards, um, in case you didn't watch the video, I will just put them here. Look at the top two cards, put one of them into your hand. So, this just cycles through your deck. Um, the same with uh, Trainer's Mail. Look at the top four cards, take one. There are almost only trainer cards in this deck, so you will always find something. And then Poker Draw Plus, also a great way to search your deck. If you get two of them, at that point you all already won, basically. Um, yeah, but the way that you actually draw more cards for your hand is, uh, first of all, Professor Oak. Discard your hand, draw seven, two strong. Um, Misty's Wrath, which you can look at the top seven cards and take two, discard the rest. Uh, you will always have one hand card more after playing Misty's Wrath. This card is really strong and unlimited, but not in all decks, so the Shovel Lock can't play Misty because it just discards too many cards. But in this deck, you just shuffle them all back anyways, as often as you want. So Misty gets you what you need really fast. And then the strongest card in this deck is Erika. Both players can draw three cards. And since if you're in the situation where you can actually use item cards, you already won. So there is no need, the back, the, the drawback isn't a drawback at all. Um, this card is just a charitable act, because it allows your opponent to deck out themselves, and then they can just say, just pass, um, otherwise you wouldn't have to flip so many poker blowers, so it's a nice, nice thing to have. Yeah, so that's it for the cards. Um, but it's actually a, a bit more difficult to play the deck. So what I have here is um, like a explanation. The first thing you have to do is you have to set up Paragon 2. So you use Poker Blower, uh, you use Poker Draw, Luxury Ball, Computer Search to get broken time space, Paragon 1, Paragon 2. If you have that, you're safe. Um, there is almost nothing that can go wrong from there. The next thing you need to do is to get your Trump card and Devolution Spray, all of your prize cards. Um, you use 
Proton decks, which I explained, shuffles your prize cards into your deck. Then you take new prize cards. And the important thing is that you need to get the other cards out of your deck first, but you don't want to have prize. So the most important thing to get is the Evolution Spray and Trump Card. You can always use Item Finder for Trump Card as well, but you really need the Evolution Spray, so you get that out, out of your prize cards. Once you have the Evolution Spray out of your prize cards and one of the Trump Cards, then you can reshuffle your deck as much as you want, so you can play an infinite amount of um, Rotom decks. What you then do is you use PokéDraw Plus to get all the cards that you don't want to have prized in your hand. And what you don't, what you really need to have not in your prize cards are Versa Seeker, Pokéblower, and yeah, the Trump card and the Devolution Spray. The other cards that you want to have, um, you can figure that out while you play, um, is Erika because you need to draw your whole deck in step 2. When you play one Erika, you lose one hand card, but you draw two more. If you play four Erikas during one like trump card cycle, you get eight hand cards plus. And you can do you only need to play one versus seeker and one devolution spray to redo the whole thing. So you get six hand cards each time you play a trump card. Um, if you just use Erika. If you use a few Misties along the way, then you also get like one extra you know, from time to time. And this way, yeah, you just win really fast. Um, in theory, you could just play Pocket Blower if you have it in your hand, and then always use Professor Oak and Reshuffle, but if you do that very often, you might actually draw into a bad hand at some point with the Oaks. But if you just try to draw the whole deck first, you can't you don't run the risk, so you will always win. And this is why you this is really important. At the end of this video there is a there is me playing against myself where I explain the first turn and then you can see why this works so well. And yes. So The next thing are the three important stats. So you have a Sableye start of 84%, which means um, half of that you will win the coin flip, so 42% of you winning, basically. There is a really, really um, yeah, low chance of you having a dead start hand. It's only 2%. I think this is, the, this is, the, this is basically the selling point of this deck. Um, it needs the lowest amount of cards to make it uh, to do its thing. Um, I will show you the consistency cards here, and there are so so many that it's almost impossible for you to not get them. I even forgot the oak here to, on, on the picture, but. This is the deck with the most consistency, and if you really want, you can cut all of the all of the anti spiritum stuff. For yeah, in this case, I would probably play Order Pad. Quite quite a new card. Um, it's not really worth it because you you don't want to auto loss against spiritum. But if you just want to show your friends like whatever how terrible the format is, then. Yeah, you can cut all of them for order path and stuff. And there are like what I call crucial prize cards. Um, prize cards which completely disallow you to win. Uh, to yeah, disallow you to win. Um, and the only way that happens is if you prize both Rotom decks and a card which you need for the loop. So if you prize, for example, both Rotom decks and the Poker Blower, so like three certain cards at once, then there is no way you can win. But it's like 0.5%. If you want to avoid that, then whatever, you can cut 
something like it, you can actually cut um, like three of the you can cut the junk arm and two of the um, item finders if you really want to be like even more sure but I think this this the way the list is set up right now it's it's just better yeah so um, yeah that's it for the explanation part like I already mentioned there are there are some cards which can completely destroy the strategy. For example, there is an Aerodactyl, which this uh, which prevents you from evolving. If your opponent has that, you can't do anything. There is a Golduck, which prevents you from playing Stadium cards. If your opponent has that, you can't win. And there is um, Cessation Crystal, which also prevents you from using Poke Poke Power Powers, and you can't win if that is in play. Um, against all of these, there is like one counter card which you could play, but there is no legit deck which can really use these cards, so it doesn't matter. And it only, and it usually only matters in the few games where your opponent actually goes first, and it's so unlikely, especially if they have you to use basic Pokemon other than Sableye. Just the fact that they have these in their decks will make the matchup for you so much better that it doesn't really matter. Alright, so here is the one game I had with explanation. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm trying this out. I don't know how well it works, but yeah, let's see. So I'm playing the deck I just talked about, um, the Porygon Donk deck. And I just put a save life from my opponent there. So. Um, I will show you how, how the deck works. And the good thing about this is that you don't need an opponent, so I'm really happy about that. Um, would be quite boring, I think. Um, yeah, and of course, you can start with the Paragon, the basic one, and then, yeah, you lose. Because your opponent goes first, and then he gets the whole turn. So this should be actually quite interesting um, because of yeah, checking for your prize cards. Um, I will see how we go through that. Um, like all these unlimited decks have like one weird skill thing you actually need. And this deck here is a good example for like sequencing and checking your prize cards because you really need to do that quite often. And you need to check for a lot, so you basically have to find out the whole th the whole six. Um, yeah, so let the program start. I would lose that game, so I would just mulligan the hand away as well. And to make this faster, I just take the save eye out and then draw six other cards. Um, Because otherwise this would be just a lot, a very boring, so I hope you can see everything. So I draw 6, this would be my starting hand, looks actually really nice, um, I have Misty and Oak. And then we put now 6 prize cards out, I don't know which they are, and it's hard to find out, but yeah, we will see. So assuming I, I won the coin flip, I would go first. And now I need some information. So there are two things you have to do in the, like I put everything in stages and like the first two are to set up Polygon and change your prize cards. So now we just need to maximize our chances of getting there. Misty is always a bit weird because you discard cards. Um, at the very beginning you have a very thick deck and you don't know enough about your deck yet. Uh, you don't know you don't know anything is prized. So Misty can often screw you up. Like if there is a program two and you have to discard that, um, and the other one is prized, and then you can get the prize cards back. So not playing Misty at the beginning is usually fine. So we have three draw cards. Uh, actually four draw cards beside that. Of course Oak discards the whole hand, so we don't play that. Um, Poké draw. You usually hold it un unless you're really forced to play it, which leaves us as Erika and Pokedex. Um, Pokedex 
gives you a choice. So to make the best choice, you need as much information as possible. Erika always gives you the same three cards. That's why you in this situation would play Erika first, because you would see your three cards and then you can make a better decision with the Pokedex. If you play the Pokedex first, you don't know the bottom three cards, so um, if there is a decision to be made there, you, it would always be a worse decision if you don't know the cards with Erika, so you play Erika first. Um, this is not has nothing to do with chance. So we see the Pokedex would have been Pokedrawer, so of course we would have taken this, but generally speaking, playing the Erika first is better. And then we can use the... Um, we use the Pokedex. Uh, we could play two Procter Plus at the same time, but um, for that, we would also find out the prize cards. Um, but now, before I take the good cards with Pokedraw, there is a higher chance of the Pokedex actually getting something I want. So if I play Pokedraw, I kind of thin out my deck. So I want to play this on a better deck. So if I play Pokedex first, I have a better deck. And now I have the choice between a Trainer's Mail and a Misty. Um, I already have Misty and like I said, I don't really want to play that. So I put the Misty on the bottom. And now again, um, yeah, we can't hit the Misty anymore. And we have the Trainer's Mail, so with the same argument, we play the Trainer's Mail first. And now we actually get a Broken Time Space. So Broken Time Space is something you often search for with your Poker Draws. But now you know you don't need this. So the poker draws now are a lot more valuable than they were before. So I can play them now. The moment I put these down, I have to check for my prize cards. So we have to keep in our mind which cards are in my hand. Uh, I need to check for the item finder. The other cards are actually not so important. Um, so let's go. The first thing we'll do is to check for the most important cards, which are Versus Seeker, Devolution Spray, and then the Polygon Line. So we go through, Versus Seeker is there, the Devolution Spray as well, the Poco Blower as well, and the Polygon Line is in. So with one deck search, we already checked for four cards. The next thing we want to check for is Erika, so we already have one in our discard pile. And we just go through one, two, three. I also checked for Misty, so there should be one Misty prized. Let's keep this in mind. Um, and the next thing is the item finder and some other stuff. So there's no item finder price as well, and Pokedraw Plus is also important. And there's one Pokedraw Plus on there, both of, on here. So there's nothing important in the price cards. Just to show this now, I would actually reveal them. Um, yeah, so like I said, one Misty, nothing else is actually really something you want to check for. So. We don't need to actually rearrange the prize cards. Um, I might actually upload some other videos which are just the same game, but maybe that time something else happened. Yeah, and because we want to set up the Polygon, we can now search for these guys. However, I play Luxury Ball, and I don't I don't actually need Luxury Ball. It's in there to check your prize cards, so we can thin out our deck the Luxury Ball. So we actually take these two in our hand and then I can play the Luxury Ball for Porygon. Um, with the Broken Time Space it can be evolved directly. And now we already we have good prize cards. And Polygon is in play, so we need to draw now. Um, because now it's almost impossible to mess up something with Misty, we can use the Misty for full value. And we get the 7. Now we just want to draw cards, so we take everything that draws cards and everything that doesn't draw cards we just discard. 
Um, the next decision is Erika or Trainer's Mail. If you play it first, you look at like seven cards. If you try the Trainer's Mail first and then the Erika, the chance of getting one certain card is less because you might fail the Trainer's Mail actually. And then the Erika is not better than before. Or even if you take a card with Trainer's Mail, the other three cards get shuffled back and then you can draw these with Erika. And the cards you don't take on the Trainer's Mail are usually stronger, uh, are usually weak. So you have a higher chance of drawing the weak cards back with the Erika. So you play Erika first, draw three. And then you play the Trainer's Mail and now you see you saw the top seven cards and the last card was the stronger one. Uh, we will actually take a poker draw here. The reason for that is that we have an item finder in our hand and we can use another poke draw from the discard pile. Um, so let's check the hand again. We have a bunch of poke draw, uh, we have a bunch of item finder. So we can use item finder. The problem with this is that we actually discard hand cards and we want to get the whole deck in our hand. So what we can do here first, because we have backup, is to use this for Erika. So we put three in the discard pile and draw three. Nothing changes, but we cycle through the deck. And now we got a Misty, which again can get us um, more cards. Misty and Erika are the only cards that actually help you to gain hand cards. And like with the Trainer's Mail, now you can look at 11 cards. And if one of these 11 is at Erika, you can draw more. So you play Misty first. And here we see Erika already. And um, another Misty as well. If you have Misty and Erika in your hand, it's a weird decision. It depends on how how many, like which cards are left in your deck. So right now, I'm pretty sure we have um, no Erika, uh, no Misty, and only one Erika on the deck. Yeah. So we have two of each in the discard pile and one in the hand. We know one Air Misty is prized. So it's really unlikely to mess up with Erika, uh, with Misty. So we can just play the Misty first um, and we don't need to make a decision here. Yeah, so I can take the poker draw and the Erika and discard the rest. Now I have both poker draws in my hand again. And this time I actually play them first because um, there is no Erika, no Misty I can draw anymore. So now I just want to get all of them back and then use these Erika's to draw back into them. So I play both Pog Draw. I have the Devolution Spray and the Earth Seeker. And you see nothing else. This would have been a really waste, wasted Erika. So we can take these two and put them in your hand. This gets shuffled, but we will shuffle anyways. So the Verse Seeker can be used to get the Trump card back. And I think there is, yeah, the second one. We don't, we know it's not prized, so there are two Trump cards in the discard pile. We can take one of them into the hand. And then we use Download. I will use a coin to keep track of that. Um, for Lysander's Trump card and then shuffle everything back. So now we have two Erika's in our hands and we need to use these to gain even more deck cards. So we play one Erika to draw three, play the second one to draw three again. We went kind of lucky, we got another Erika here and like earlier in the game, the only card we care about is the Versus Seeker. If we have to discard a Versus Seeker, that would be bad because then we would be forced to get a item finder for trump card and this means we lose three hand cards opposed to one um yeah of course we also don't want to discard an erica but other than that there is nothing important in the deck left um, there is already three ericas out of the deck there is one erica left so there is no way this misty messes up anything so we can just play it and here these are the only cards that actually draw so we discard the rest and same argument again with this misty and here we actually hit the both cards I just talked about, and we can discard them. And now, last, just like earlier, there is nothing left in the deck anymore that we actually want to draw. So we can play the Devolution Spray, 
to get program back. This resets everything. This is a new program now. We evolve it. Then we play Red Seeker for trump card. We can use download and use the effect. So play one Erica for really bad cards. But we have the second one. Again, nothing uh, really useful. And now there is nothing in our hand anymore. And now we have to trade one for one. Um, the only cards that we actually have currently that trade one for one are these three. And Poker Draw, of course, loses value if you just played for one. So we play the Trainer's Mask. I get the top four cards. Now we find a Poker Draw and an Erica. And this is an interesting decision. I'll actually take the Erica because I can still draw onto the Poker Draw later. Um, with the Erica, but the Erica just gets me further quicker. And we have the second trainer's mail, and we have so many junk arms that we can still use to just trade one for one, uh, which I just I forgot to mention that of course, if you use item finder, you discard three and draw three. So you can trade these one for one as well. But this is usually the last thing you want to do because then you make your discard pile bigger and fill it with bad cards. So the second trainer's mail actually gives us another Misty. So we can put that in our hand. Um, so I played this Trainer's May before the other Erika. Which uh, I'm now doing because the more consistency cards I shuffle back with each trump card, um, the better the deck just gets in general. So if we happen to run dry, everything gets more value. But the this Misty is like explained earlier. This is a very bad Misty. Um, we have to discard two poker draw, but other than that, it's quite nice. And now we can use these to gain hand cards again. And now we just need the Seeker and the Evolution Spray. We have neither of them, so we have to play both poker draws. But what you also have to keep in mind is, after I play these poker draws, I don't have anything in my hand to drag one for one. So I will continue to use these cards to trade first, because my deck is thinner now. Um, and this, if you play Pokedex or Trainers May first, here in this scenario, again Pokedex, because then you draw, like you can see, at six cards. But if you play the other way around, it's a bit less likely. So here is another Misty. And now we play the Misty first, because of the other Trainers Mail. Now we want to just get the Devolution Spray. So playing Misty first allows us to look at more cards. Um, and here's the Devolution Spray immediately. And the Rest Seeker as well. So we can just take both of them, put it in the hand, and now we know there is nothing in this deck we desire. We can use Devolution Spray, Rest Seeker for Trump card, download again. And you see our hand is getting bigger, but quite slow. Um, of course, with my explanation, this takes a bit longer, um, but well. So now I ended my, well, it's not really a turn, but my face without anything in my hand. But now I can use the poker draws. Um, you always want to use the poker draws if you can, because if you don't use them and just keep them in your hand the, for the whole game, then they never get shuffled back with trump cards. So every trump card loses value. Um, if your deck is quite thick like this, it's currently still a decent deck. I always take a Misty and an Erica because it's really unlikely that the Misty will mess anything up. So I can play the Misty first and thin out my deck this way. So as you can see, I don't need these. So the Misty just discarded them. It's like a super battle compressor. <laughs> So I play the other Misty as well because, um, yeah, just like that, I got the other Erica, so it's even less likely for me to mess this up. I got a Devolution Spray as well. I can use this one. And now the last Misty actually is quite likely to discard something we want, um, but we were, we were lucky and didn't. So we can take these in our hand. There are three deck cards left. One of them is a Verse Seeker, so I can just play Erica, draw my whole deck, and get the Verse Seeker. 
But now we can use trump card with three Erica in our hand. Um, yeah, so we play the Evolution Spray again, get rid of this, the Seeker for trump card, put this back, shuffle them all back. So all you have to keep in mind is that once you play trump card, you need to be able to draw afterwards immediately. And the better your hand is, bef like when you play the trump card, the better your draws will be afterwards. And what you want to do is you want to get what I just did with less Misties every time. Um, yeah, so now my hand is really great. Um, I can play Erika's to draw more. And now you are really just going to thin out the whole cycle as much as you can. Um, at this point, of course, like the moment you saw the start hand, it was almost impossible for the opponent to win. But of course, now there is no way back. Now this is just annoying for both you and your opponent, um, if you have one. <laughs> so we play. We could play both poker draws. But I actually want to play them at the end and use my Erika's first. Uh. Yeah, so I didn't draw another Erika, so I can use these for two Erika. And what you would usually do, I have one poker draw in my hand. You would search uh, for this. But the deck is so low, I know I will draw this at some point anyway. So I can actually take two Erika's. And draw six. And I got the other pocket draw, I got the devotion spray. There's still one Erika somewhere. And now I actually make this dependent on how many deck cards there are. So there are six deck cards left. And now I can show you actually why this is the better way. So now I have a hundred percent chance of getting the other Erika with first Pokedex. Okay, here I got it. So this has to go under these. And if I would play the trainer's mail, I would have looked at all the other ones and taken the better one. So I, sh I would usually do this. I would I usually wouldn't do this, but now just to show. Um, here we take the Misty because we can play the Misty immediately and we gain one hand card. And now again, the Revolution Spray versus Seeker. Shuffle all that back. And we're almost, almost ready. So, Erika. Another Erika. Oh, nice. Another Erika. And now we can play Misty and get the other two cards. And again, the Lush Spray, Red Seeker. Erica. Another Erica. And we're almost ready. We didn't get the Verse Seeker, which is now the last deck card. Um, but now the game is over. Because now we have five deck cards. But we also have two Erika's in our hand. So we can play both of them and draw the whole deck. So now this is our hand. This is the desired hand size, which is everything. <laughs> um, and now you just need to actually knock out your opponent. So we play Pocket Blower, flip a coin. Tates. And then we do everything again. The Rift Spray vs. Seeker. As you can see, five deck cards. Two Erika's, draw all of them. And then you play Blower. Tates. The Rift Spray vs. Seeker. This is your deck. You usually shuffle this, but you can just say to your opponent, it doesn't matter, I draw all of them now. Um, Pocket Blower again. Tails once more. And you see, it doesn't matter how many Tails you flip, because 
you just do this shuffle play both area cards at some point you will flip heads <laughs> this is a good good example um, This is a so with the save light deck. If you flip a lot of tails, you actually lose. But here, if you flip 100 tails in a row, it doesn't matter because <laughs> you can just flip as often as you want. So, I think in most card games, there is like a rule if you enter a loop that you can just tell your opponent, Yeah, I will do this x times. Um, but of course here in Pokemon this doesn't exist because this is I think pretty much the only loop there is. So now if you attack we can put one damage counter on the opponent. And then we do this once more. <laughs> Play two Erika's, draw the cards. Uh, we don't need these hand cards anymore, so we can make like two hand card piles. Um, yeah. Play the blower. Tails. There are quite a, quite a few tails, but at this point, I think you already know how this is going to end. So damage. This is your deck. So you draw these. Blower. Shuffle back. Play Erica. Erica. Draw six. You don't even draw six. Like you actually only draw five. These are a lot of tails. I should get rid of this die. <laughs> so we're halfway there. And if you actually have an opponent, you can release him or her very soon. But of course, most people, most sane people will just scoop um, the moment they see that you're not that wrong. Um, so let's see, is this the last book blower? Yes, it is. So this has now 60 damage, gets knocked out, and there is nothing else for the opponent, so you win. And yeah, this is kind of a cool deck. Especially because it works so well. Um, also with the yeah, Rotom Pokedex, it got really good. Even better because now you can make the list much more consistent compared to before. <laughs>